Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. So I'm going to be explaining how this multiplier circuit works. So first off, I'm just going to go through each and every component and explain how it works. So let's start with the full adder. So the full adder is going to add input A and the current state of the output. And the result or the sum is going to be stored in the memory. In this case, the memory is simply made out, uh, is simply made out of uh, D flip flops, right? So now let's move on to the comparator. So the comparator is simply going to be comparing input B or the value input B with the counter output. Okay. So in this case, my counter is simply going to be keeping track of the number of additions made. I'm going to explain that um, in detail um later on and so in this case uh, as i was saying the comparator is going to be comparing input b and the counter output so the, the comparator mode in this case is going to be to check if uh, a is greater than b so it since input b is connected to the, to the a pins and the counter output is going to be connected to the b pins that means the comparator is going to be uh, checking to see if input B is, is greater than the count output. So whenever this is the case, if uh, A is greater than B, or if input B is greater than the count output, the output here, so the output of the comparator is going to be equal to 1. Okay, so when it's equal to 1, as you can see right here, the, the clock is also connected to this end gate. So when we have both ones, that means the, um, the output here is totally uh, depending on, it's, it's basically depending on the clock. So the clock is going to run normally, like nothing, you know, nothing happened. However, when, uh, when we have a situation when uh, input B is now less than the counter A, or if input B is, is now equal to the counter uh, variable or the counter output, the output of the comparator becomes zero and then this basically turns off the the clock so when the clock is turned off that means um there won't be any uh enable signal at our uh, at our memory as well as at our counter so everything just stops and the memory won't be updated so that's how we get our output okay so that's like the whole idea of the circuit and now let's move on to the flag uh, the flag I see or this part right here. So this is like a combination of a D flip flop and a latch. Okay. So the whole point of this this flag uh, D flip flop is going to store the overflow flag. So this overflow flag is simply going to tell me um, whenever my you know any computation exceeds uh, four bits then the overflow flag is going to be switched to one so it's basically going to tell me uh, whenever i have a result that is greater than four bits okay and since in my case this multiplier circuit is only is only going to be outputting uh four bit uh result that means if i have a result that is like five bits i need to know that you know the the result is actually you know much greater than four bits so now let's move on to the basic concept of the circuit so we all know that multiplication is addition it's, it's basically the same thing so if i have a times b i'm simply saying add a b times so in this case this entire circuit i'm simply just saying add the valid at input a b times right so that's like the whole idea of this entire circuit, right? So the counter is simply going to be tracking the number of additions made, um, you know, on A. So like the number of times that I've added A, right? So for example, if I've added A uh, three times, that means the counter is going to be a three. If, I, if, I, if I've added A two times, the counter is going to be a two and so forth, okay? So... Now that means when our counter now finally reaches B, that means we have added A B times and now we have to stop any updates from taking place. As you can see, like as I was saying, there's a loop, right? 
So that means um, this value is simply going to keep on accumulating. So if you don't stop the loop, that means the value is going to keep on increasing. So basically the comparator simply tells us when to stop the loop. So yeah, that's basically the concept of the um, the whole multi uh, 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 multiplier circuit. So now let's just go through some examples. So uh, right here, this is what this is. Uh, okay, as you can see, um, this is the MSB, and this is the LSB. So this is zero one one zero. This is actually six, and this is uh, zero zero one one, which is three. Right, so if I compute this two, I'm gonna get six times three is gonna give me um eighteen. Right, so eighteen is actually a five bit number. Actually, let me start with the four bit number first. So let's just start with um six times two. So as you can see, six times two is gonna give me twelve. This is actually one one zero zero. As you can see, this is the MSB, this is the LSB. And as you can see, the um, overflow flag right now is zero because we have a four bit number because twelve is a four bit number. So let me just start uh, I, 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 let me just try some other um examples. So let's try maybe what five times three. So five times three, fifteen as you can see. Let's try maybe something else um. Let's try maybe let's try watch. Okay, seven times two. As you can see, this is actually fourteen. One 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 zero, that's fourteen. Let's try three times three. Let me just first stop it. Stop the simulation and then uh, let's start over. So three times three, as you can see, one zero zero one. That's nine. Uh, let's maybe try um, two times three. So two times three is supposed to be six, and as you can see, we have uh, six right here. Zero one one zero. That's six. Let's try two times. Okay, maybe let's try four times two. Four times two. So this is. Um, So this is going to be what? Zero one zero zero, which is four. This is zero zero one zero that's two. And as you can see, four times two is equal to eight, which is one zero zero zero. Okay, so now let's move on to values that are greater than uh four bits. So let me just stop it first. And maybe let's say this is what this is um Oh yeah, this is actually zero one one zero. That's six. This is three. So six times three, that's eighteen, right? Which is a five bit number. So now see what happens to the overflow flag. So as you can see, the overflow flag now is one, which indicates that our value is greater than four bits. So now another interesting thing here to note is the overflow flag in this case for five bit for five bit numbers that is is also going to act as an msb for five bit numbers because if you look at this number right here one zero zero one zero that's actually equal to 18 if you convert it to decimal so this is only for five bit numbers the the overflow flag can also be the msb only for five bit numbers right so this case is, is basically telling us that our number is greater than four bits and also it basically gives us the msp of our result so now let's go for much larger numbers like for example numbers that are like six bits and so forth so let me just show you let me just first stop it so now this is going to be zero one 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 and zero one one zero, which is forty two. Forty two is a um, six bit number, right? So again, we we expect the overflow flag to 
let us know that this is a six bit number. So let's run it. And as you can see, it's also equal to one as well. And now the difference now, you know, like what I was telling you, um, since this is now a six bit number, the overflow flag is simply an overflow flag now. It doesn't really do much. It just tells us that the number or the computation that we made is, you know, is greater than four bits. And I think in certain programming languages, there's um, an exception called the overflow error. Whenever you, you know, maybe like whenever you are writing a program that involves a computation, uh, which gives a result that is too large. So that's like the same thing here that's going on. So in this case, this would actually return an error uh, in, in overflow um, error. Like actually they call it uh, raising an error. So yeah, um, that's basically how the multiplier circuit works. So I thank you guys for your time and I would really appreciate your um, your input on this. So uh, for that, thank you.